thank you very much for those very kind words. Um, I'll just see if this loads. And it's not live, is it? Should be animating. Is it animating? No, I'll just try and flip the slide. It seems like the feed is not coming through. I'll plug it out and put it in again. Oh no. Do we have a different cable or maybe just a magic touch? Oh, I also need the audio cable. Where did we put that? While we fix the other thing. Oh, it's here. We have it, amazing. Uh, that's Monty in the background, by the way, it's uh, a corgi. Uh, it's not mine, uh, unfortunately. Um, yes, okay, before I say anything more about Gradients and myself, uh, we have a World Cup coming up here in Russia, and I, I wanted to, to celebrate that. Uh, I think it's amazing. Um, in the, these times, I think it's wonderful that we can all get together uh, both here but also around football and just have fun and be humans and enjoy each other. So actually I wanted all of you to, to, to stand up because um, this picture, well sorry, this picture is back from 86 and that's the last time Denmark was like really good at football. Um, it's also the year I was born. Uh, some people say it's a coincidence, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but what uh, was invented that year was the Mexican wave and I kind of wanted us to do it here. So if you all please stand up and uh, I'll just find some music. <laughs> all right, so what we do is you all get down like this and then just, and then from the front, all, all, all of you, all of you down, all of you down. And then from the front we go now. Yeah, okay, once more, once more. Ooh, and last time, come on, down again, down again. Ooh, Thank you. Oh, I forgot to show the video. Oh, well. <laughs> so, uh, since I was unsure about the, how the, this screen would look, I uh, made a small website. You can go there on your phone right now, actually, and um, every once in a while, like a couple of times, that you will be able to see like a live preview on your phone. Uh, and that's whenever you see Monty in the top right corner, it means something will be happening on your phone. Uh, so if you can go there and then please tell me once it says Privyet Mir, or how you pronounce it. Uh, oh, it's okay. Yeah. Mir is a wonderful word. It means both world and peace, right? I think that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, do you get the Privyet Mir anyway? Amazing, okay, so nothing is going to happen there now. I just needed to verify that it was up and running. You can save it on your home screen or something and then you will be able to quickly access it once stuff starts happening. So I grew up in Ethiopia, in, in Africa. Uh, moved to Denmark when I was 14. Um, a couple of years ago I started working with typefaces and once you start working with typefaces, you become very kind of detail oriented and like, oh, this shape should be this and this. And then you work an entire afternoon on one letter and you think, oh, I made a drastic difference. Next morning you look at it and it's like almost the same as it was the day before. But uh, uh, yeah, I also started working with Ethiopic uh, typefaces to, to uh, figure out how to draw them and like to get those shapes and curves right. Um, so if you uh, in this talk think like, oh, this guy is next level obsessed with details and nobody will notice, uh, don't blame me, blame uh, typography, because that's like the, the reason for, for that happening. Um, <laughs> cheers. Uh, I, have a, I have a mention of you later, uh, Oliver, else you'll see. Uh, so why, why even use gradients? Uh, what, what's, what's the purpose? They well, they look great. And also we want our users to say, let's see if this one works as well. We want them to say, wow. <laughs> uh, but we want them to say like a specific kind of wow, not just wow in general. Uh, we don't want them to say, wow, that gradient on top of the picture is so colorful. Uh, they might do it here because I've, I've completely overdone it. Um, 
But what we want them to say is that, like, wow, that's a nice and colorful picture. Uh, it's not normally the gradient, but it's the content. It's the picture we want the user to see. Also, we don't want them to say, wow, that gradient really helps me read the text above the picture. Uh, we just want them to say, wow, that text on top of the picture is actually readable. Uh, oftentimes, it's not. Uh, and we have a tendency to put a lot of text on top of pictures because we love pictures. But yeah, we want the users to say, wow. Uh, I worked in healthcare for 10 years, studied medicine, studied nursing. Uh, none of these are me, uh, but I, I could, <laughs> just if you're in doubt, but uh, I, I could have been the, the lady. I worked in the ICU for a couple of years. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, I had a professor, and I remember he talked about uh, neuroscience, uh, like the vision, and how we are able to see like the tiniest kinks. Uh, so. That line you see there behind the bricks is what the mason used to uh, align the bricks so they become like perfectly uh, yeah, aligned. And we are actually able to see like a tiny kink that if you look at it just in isolation, you're not able to see it. Uh, but because you have like perfect uh, symmetry or perfect like straightness on each side of that kink, we are able to register like something is off here, even though we cannot see it. And I thought it was kind of fascinating. Um, it enables us to, to build building like buildings like this. This is Grundtvigs uh, Kirke in Copenhagen. Uh, it's a bit out of the city center, so there's like almost no tourists, but uh, it's one of my uh, favorite places in, uh, in Copenhagen. Uh. Also, like some, d does anybody know who this is? Anybody? Yes, amazing. Uh, this is Lucy. Uh, Lucy is 3.2 million years old or something. One of the most famous persons out of Ethiopia. Uh, she is believed to be like uh, one of the old, oldest skeletons we've found in the world, of uh, yeah, predecessor to, to homo, homo sapiens. And for her to be able to detect a kinkness or an offness was not something that enabled her to build a nice building or a church, uh, but it might have helped her in a situation where she would like look over the savanna, and then all of a sudden, like this would happen. Um, <laughs> So, so my professor at the time, at least, argued that like being able to detect these kinknesses and like small details uh, is what our brain is like highly geared towards detecting. Um, on the other hand, w if we look at the savanna, we don't look on each individual like uh, blade of grass. What we look, we just see, well, here's the savanna, uh, and that's how our brain kind of um, uh, interprets it. Uh, you know, sometimes shit happens, and then. You have this situation going on. Uh, can anybody spot an error? <laughs> yes, OK. Uh, you know, it's almost painful uh, sometimes to see these things. Uh, what happens in our brain is also that what would have been just like one nice big pattern, all of a sudden it gets like decomposed, and you see like, oh, it's a bunch of tiles because you have one tile that is out of order. Uh, also, on the previous slide, what was written on it? Shit happens, hit, yeah, so, so actually it, it said hit happens. Uh, some of you might not have noticed that, uh, and it's because, again, our brain is lazy, so it just, because I, yeah, I said shit happens and only sh showed it for a short amount of time, this is just how our brain works, and we can use that to our advantage, and uh, yeah, a bit, if we dig into the eye, uh, go a bit, like, deeper, uh, just because, then we have, yeah, that's the eyeball cut in half, and then you can see like the cells. Uh, and then at the very inner layer, you have like the photoreceptors uh, just above the epithelium. And what they are responsible for is detecting light. Uh, and they are organized, it's, it's flipped around because it was in the textbook, it's like this is the orientation, and then the next image, this was this, and it's like why? Okay. Uh, so light comes from uh, from the top. That's why I felt it was a bit. Uh, every uh, all the photoreceptors are then combined into like a um, receptive field, and that translates into like less than a degree of field of vision. And then if we look at the neurons, like the bipolar cell, or the next one that would be just after it, called the, the ganglion cell, uh, what actually happens w if we stimulate them? You would see that just all light. It just goes like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, this is fine. Give it like some edge, nothing happens, like complete silence. So that is like a difference and something like, oh, the brain should, should register this. Uh, 
have, again, a contrast, and you can see it just fires like crazy and tells the brain that, like, oh, something is happening here. And then uh, if it, nothing is, uh, it's not, no light on it at all, uh, it's, again, in a, like a, a resting state where it just fires. Uh, and this tells us about, like, some of the senses that we have and like that they are very tuned towards detecting changes and edges and motion and not so much the other stuff. We just kind of tune that out and, and our brain doesn't really care too much about it. Uh, does anybody know uh, these guys? Mama, no? No? Hmm? So I used to work there. It's a flight comparison site out of Denmark, um, similar to, to Kayak and, and uh, Google Flights and whatever, search engine. Uh, we had the background like this, and then the lead designer came up to me and said, like, hey, we want to, want to introduce some branded elements, and what we want to have is, is we want to have this, this gradient on the background that goes from left to right, and it should blend in nicely with the background. Uh, and he had tried different things. He tried, like, a Gaussian blur. If you do web development, you know, like, Gaussian blurring at that big element in terms of scroll performance is not something you want to do. Uh, but, but, I mean... It looked kind of okay, but uh, it, it got me thinking, like, how, how could we improve this? Uh, and this brings me to a point that, like, sometimes we need designers to make <laughs> mistakes uh, that we developers are then kind of challenged and, like, oh, can we, f can we fix this? Can we, can we improve it? Uh, can we solve it somehow? Uh, and also remember, obviously, no mistakes, only happy accidents. Uh, dear late Bob Ross. Uh, so, so what I kind of started working on and, and tr trying out was to, to then, like, and it might not be very visible here, but I'll zoom in in a, in a second. Uh, but uh, the transition here is a lot smoother than the transition here. I'm not sure how it looks on the screen. But if we flip to the next one, you can see, oh, ah, so if you open your phone, uh, those of you that have it. Uh, and this is a bit what... Uh, was teased or uh, spoiled or whatever yesterday. Uh, but it's uh, basically, you can look at gradients from going from one color, and then it just happens in a straight line. Um, you mix one color with the other color, and then you have the, the new color that you want. Uh, and you could see that on your phone right now, I think. Then if I start and um, on your phone, it's like on the bottom half, you would see kind of like an edge. Uh, but if I start doing something like this, what you should see on your phone is like all of a sudden that kind of edge is, uh, is disappearing a bit. And if I, if I go back and just make it uh, even harder, you should, you should see a hard edge again. And then we go back and then like all of a sudden it's, it's, it's soft. Um, and, and those of you familiar with the, like CSS in general will know this is just, th did it work? Yeah. Oh, nice, thanks. <laughs> I was just curious. Uh, this is just a Bezier curve, right? It's just a cubic Bezier um, uh, thing. Um, nothing, nothing too complicated. Uh, that's the reason why we, uh, I think Chris Coyier was the one who said, like, when I wrote this article, he said, like, oh, this is the squircle of colors uh, or gradients. And a squircle, uh, for those of you that don't know it, is the combination of a square and a circle. Uh, so it's like a box with rounded corners, but it's rounded in a specific way. Uh, so if you look at these ones, you would see like the one here to the right is a circle, and the one to the left is a, a normal border radius. And what you sh may, might be able to see, it's very tiny, but like here you have kind of like a small edge. Here it just kind of eases into the curve uh, very, very smoothly. Uh, might, if I zoom in a bit, you might be able to, to, to tell it uh, better. Um, and that's basically the same thing uh, did with the this one is like easing into the transition. So this is like going from no change to like a constant change. Whereas this is the equivalent of like you go on straight line and you kind of ease into the curve. Uh, and then our brain is just more happy because it doesn't necessarily detect uh, or get kind of, oh, something is happening here. Uh, so, so I had this idea and it kind of solved the problem that we had at Momondo, and, and I thought it was fun, so, but you know, ideas are worthless if we don't really share them. And also, I'm a, I've only been doing this for a couple of years. Uh, in August, I will be have doing this for like three years. Don't have any education uh, to do it. I just started because it was fun. And so if I can do this, these things, like anybody can do it. Um, so, so what I did was I, I contacted Chris and said like, hey, I want to write an article about it. And he's like, oh, sure. Uh, 
uh, and I was not like, I was a nobody at the time, but, uh, but he was like, oh, this sounds interesting. Then uh, he picked it up. Uh, so so I, I would urge you to like, if you have an idea and you go like, oh, but uh, I cannot write about this or uh, people are more clever than me or whatever, but just like go out and do it because uh, by, by telling the world about it, you also get like a feedback and you get the interaction and you, you learn a, a hell of a lot from it. Um, so what I did, I yeah, wrote an article about it, and then the very end, pop, pop, pop. scroll down a second. I wrote something like this, like some, preferably I'd like to be able to do something like this in the future. Uh, and I very deliberately didn't make any proposal myself because I figured, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, I will not be able to kind of make this happen, but uh, just wrote the article and then luckily somebody else kind of picked it up and thought, hey, this is neat, this is nice. Uh, started having a, a conversation about it. And then, uh, uh, does any of you know Eric Meyer? Nice. Uh, so so uh, to me, he's like the, one of the first names I learned because I used his CSS reset set back in the days. Uh, but he's doing a lot of stuff. He thought it was a nice idea as well and turned it into a, a proposal for the, for the drafts that Yuna uh, uh, was talking about earlier. Um, so the initial syntax, uh, and this is also like once you start putting stuff out there, like I had some very specific needs that I wanted to, to solve. And if you look at this, this is obviously wrong on, on multiple levels, but it kind of solved the, what I wanted to do. Uh, but it was a very kind of inflexible syntax. Uh, it was more like a syntactic sugar than an actual kind of stable suggestion for a syntax. Uh, what Eric Meyer then uh, proposed was something like this, where you say, oh, okay, it's, uh, it's still a linear gradient, so let's just call it that. Uh, but then we define the, the, the blending of the colors within the, uh, within the gradient function. Uh, but it had some issues, because then, like, why are you not able to do, or should you be able to add it to the first color stop, or what happens when you add multiple color stops? So then Amelia came in uh, in the GitHub thread and was like, oh, yeah, uh, why don't we do something like this? Uh, and I think that is a very clever solution to Basically, what you do is then you define it between the colors. Say, okay, how do I want to go from color A to color B uh, with a timing function, which is not called a timing function anymore because it's being used elsewhere, hopefully here as well. So I uh, should call it easing functions, uh, I think now, uh, according to the working group at least. Um, and this also obviously makes it possible to use step functions and to other stuff. Um, Uh, so how does this all look? Because uh, this is just like a lot of syntax and made an online editor for you to play around with. Uh, and basically you can see that you can mix it up and then in here you would have the timing function and you could have a step function where you could define the number of steps and that would kind of change the, the gradient accordingly. Uh, the steps functions right now, they only have two. So this is kind of like not the uh, official syntax or anything, but because they were made for animation. So you would either skip the first frame or the last frame to be able to do a loop. Uh, if you want to mix colors, then it also becomes relevant to say, well, I want the first color. Let's just reduce the number of steps. Uh, I want the first color and the last color to be a part of the gradient as well. Or sometimes if you have the gradient in between two sections, maybe you want to be able to to skip both of them so that the gradient actually doesn't include any of the start or ending colors, but just kind of mixes in between. Uh, yeah, and it's up there, so you can play around with it. So that's like the easing part of the gradients. Then if we turn to color modes and spaces, what we will see is that uh, again, this is looking at the eye and the neurons, how they fire when they're stimulated with lights. Um, and you can see, uh, similar to when you have uh, hearing, the sounds, that it's not a linear re relationship, it's a kind of a logarithmic relationship. So that we are more, like, so if you imagine one light bulb uh, being the smallest amount of uh, light and ten light bulbs being the maximum, uh, we are much more able to detect when you go from one to two light bulbs than we are going from nine to ten, uh, because uh, it requires a, a bigger, yeah, 
the more amount of light, a bigger amount of uh, change it requires for, uh, for our brain to register it, similar to, to sound. Uh, it kind of looks like this. Uh, so you would have uh, a linear relationship, and you can see the gradient kind of looks very white quickly. And if you look at the bottom one, it, you can see it looks a bit more balanced and, and evened out. Uh, and this is what you call gamma correction. Um, oh yeah, Monty again. Uh, this time, actually, you shouldn't open the app, but what you should do is you should open your camera and then try and focus on an object near you so that this screen becomes blurry. Uh, does that make sense? Yep, OK. Uh, and then I'll blur some of the elements here as well. Um, what? No. This was working a second ago. Okay, let me just reload, sorry. Da, da, da. I should have added an index to this or something so I was able to quickly jump. Ah, well, don't do live demos. Okay, the top elements, they would also be blurring, uh, but ignore those for now. What you should see then on your phone uh, if you blur the elements is that the you can see the one on the left. It's kind of dark uh, and murky in the middle. Uh, the one in the middle uh, it looks kind of nicer. Uh, and it's a bit more similar to what happens w if you kind of blur it with the camera or with your vision. Um, and if we look at it from like a numbers perspective, you could go from red to green, right? And you mix the two colors. So how do you mix them? Well, you have a value here of <coughs> sorry, 255. Here you have a value of 0. So you say. 255 plus 0 divided by 2 equals boom. And then you have it here, right? Uh, and this looks kind of dark. And that's because of the nonlinear kind of relationship between uh, lightness and our kind of how we perceive it. Um, so what uh, linear RGB does is basically uh, does the gamma correction. Uh, you square the number, uh, or not square, the opposite. Um, yeah, and then you, you square the result. And this math, I don't know about you guys, but when I have to do math, I'm terrible at it. So I always go something like this, because then I can understand what is happening. Um, oh, sorry, should have done it though. black. Um, so you can see here you go, this is 5. And over here, you would say the, this is 0, this is 100. And the square root of 100, I do not know, but I know the square root of 14. Uh, no, sorry, not uh, of 100, of uh, 100 divided by 2, so the square root of 50. Uh, but the square root of 49 is, is 7, so that's like the closest number. So you see, like the, that's how, how these values are, are computed when you do a, a linear RGB. Um, then, and the German people here m might correct me for my pronunciation, uh, but the Helmholtz uh, Kohlrausch uh, effect is uh, when when we have uh, colors of, of the, the same kind of luminance or the amount of light, the ones uh, the, that are colored uh, they seem brighter than the ones with the white light do. Uh, and you should have this on your phone as well if you open that one. Um, so basically, the background, the light gray background here, and these colors are all the same uh, luminance. And you can see that if I take this one and, and drag it down, uh, depending on how the screen is calibrated, uh, it might be slightly off. Um, but uh, and you, you should be able to do the same on your phone, actually, if I don't play around with it, because then I would overwrite your settings. Uh, so basically, you, you, you will see that, and I'll just drag this up again, different colors, they, some of them appear lighter and some of them appear darker, even though they have the same amount of lightness. Uh, so this is why you have something like lab and LCH space, uh, which kind of uh, attempts to correct light with how we perceive light, or colors, sorry, uh, and light. Uh, so, so the lab space, you can see, is, is not as washed out as the RGB, and it's a bit more saturated than the LCH space uh, even more so. Uh, yeah, let's not talk too much about this one. And then the same, if you compare, you would see that, I don't know, when you have light colors, uh, standard RGB actually does a, a decent job. Uh, it's more when you, when you have the very saturated colors that it becomes very murky and, and washed out in the middle. 
So, so my recommendation in general, if you want to do a gradient, just use lab, because uh, it works. And this, Oliver, is where I had the tagline called uh, use lab, it's fab. But then I had the apostrophe, uh, which was not the correct one. And in the web font that I had loaded, uh, I didn't, uh, yeah, so I didn't have time to, to fix it. So I had to change the tagline because, because of you. Uh, but I hope, hope that is OK. <laughs> uh, I have five minutes. So, so I'll demo a couple of these things. Um, if we go into Sketch, so uh, what I did recently was I created a plugin to be able to, to play around. Uh, let me just show the UI. So this is Sketch uh, to, to be able to kind of play around with th these things directly within Sketch. Uh, you would either yeah, do something to the bottom or the start, and yeah, you can kind of compare how it looks. Uh, you can see you can achieve results where like it, the fade out is just like a lot nicer and less noticeable, but also like if you wanted to, you can make it so that the bottom part is kind of less dark uh, compared to if you just have a normal uh, linear gradient over here. If you use this approach for a vignette, uh, then it again becomes more smooth. Uh, this is just four gradients all around it. Uh, this is the different color spaces where you can see she becomes very dark and it's a bit like murky in, in the middle. Uh, but using the LCH space, it's a bit more kind of saturated and, and nice to look at uh, steps just because it's a fun visual effect. Uh, it's not necessarily like the, it's not, yeah, you would use that for a different purpose, right? Uh, and these are the, the conic gradients that uh, Una was talking about uh, that is not part of the CSS spec yet, but obviously they are part of uh, Sketch. Let me just see if I select the correct layer here. So you would go in and say, oh, let's ease in and out of this with a default one or a, a circular one. Uh, and then if we go in and just for fun, try to hide her. Uh, let's see. And it becomes a bit easier to see some of these things. Um, where, like, if you do a gradient like this, often you would want it to be maybe not this much, but like around here or whatever. So you have more more colors in the middle, and like the transition uh, in the bottom is, is uh, more concentrated, uh, and still, yeah, starts and, and ends in a uh, very smooth uh, and nice way. Uh, in Photoshop, you're not able to... I didn't open Photoshop. Oh, sorry. Uh, I haven't created a plugin there yet, and I probably won't, because I'm not using it that much anymore. Uh, if anyone wants to do it, then please let me know. I'd like, like to help, but I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. Uh, got my laptop stolen, so I'm stuck with a slightly slow one at the moment. Uh, ah, but everything is online, right? So it's, uh, it's wonderful. Um, it does. Uh, let me go into the fill. Let me see if I'm able to find it. Because now I will be able to demonstrate what you're also able to do in the... Oh. You're actually able to do this within the CSS right now. Oh, should update. It's part of this. No, why isn't that updating? Selected the thing. No. Well, never mind. I made a demo of it on the browser instead. That's easier to show instead of something you don't know uh, how to how to use. Um, so, because that was one of the pushbacks, is that like uh, you can use the and that's Amelia the mentioning the the color hints. Uh, you are able to use. Let's see if I can find the link. Okay, never mind. What you're able to do is you can do like a linear gradient, and then you can say red, and then you can say 25%, and then you can say black. Uh, and basically what this tells the browser is that the half point between red and black is not at 50%, it should be at 25%. So with this technique, you could also create like a somewhat kind of eased uh, appearance, but it's, uh, it's very less like, playful and a li li much more limited. And I don't know, I also just am more used to cubic bees here, so I find it more intuitive to, to, to play around with. Um, 
yeah. Um, what more do I want to show? So the web is wonderful, and as Una mentioned, like it's it's everywhere, and uh, I think that's fantastic. Uh, I enjoy it. It's like uh, the playground, and so I would create a library for the color stop outputs uh, to to generate them, and then that library I can reuse both on the website, in the post CSS plugin, which I will unfortunately not have time to show, but uh, you can ask me about it afterwards. Uh, and also in the, the, the view plugin, uh, or the sorry, the sketch plugin. And the sketch plugin is, is created in view as well, so I was able to reuse uh, like a lot of the logic you have on the website within the sketch uh, plugin. So, so, so being able to use web technologies, it just gives you like a Swiss army tool that you can just apply, I don't know, 99% of places where you have a screen or something these days. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's an amazing power and capability to have, and uh, it's really fun to play around with. Obviously, as Una mentioned, CSS Houdini is going to be the next thing that I'll play around with with this thing to, to, to try and implement and see how it looks. Uh, uh, so we wouldn't necessarily need to have a post-CSS for it, but the post-CSS plugin is nice because it generates code similar to what you see down here, uh, which is just like a, a fallback where you have like it's a low poly version of the curve, but it, it, it kind of works. Um, Uh, I've added some links. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I'm not uh, the cl most clever guy, but then fortunately there are libraries you can use, and uh, I'm using that heavily uh, for this. And, uh, and I have to show this one as well, inspired by <laughs> the talk in the morning last uh, yesterday. Uh, this looks very dated, and my hope is that uh, what I have shown you here today will look just as dated in two years, because then we will be able to do new and amazing things. But it's also like, I've used this a lot, uh, so there's like no shame in that. Uh, and uh, we should just be very optimistic and, and thankful for where we are heading and, and what we can do in the future. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Andreas, thank yes. you so much for the wonderful talk about gradients. All the gradients. So, gradients. When not to use gradients? Oh, uh, when, oh, I'll just pull this up a bit. When they are, I don't know. Or is everything better with gradients? Everything is more or less better with gradients. No, but it's, uh, you, you can't overuse it. And, and the, the, the points I had and, and the wow slides very much kind of, you often want to use it, like the gradients is not the main content. It's the pictures, it's the text, it's whatever. So you use the gradients to either be able to see that better or to add some like visual niceness to that. You, you shouldn't maybe, or you could use it on, on its own, but then it's very much for the effect and not for the, right. yeah. Right, but I mean, at this point, it's very interesting because it gets to, we get into the point where we get so many little fine things. We can adjust this and that. We have content property in CSS. We can, we can do all the stuff. And I was very excited about the CSS SVG easing gradients proposal. So, and all of this stuff. So when does it stop? <laughs> I mean, we need to get work done by the end of the day. Yeah. And so do we need to really perf like make every single thing, every single fine detail that we have to deal with perfect? Or can we, should we embrace imperfectness and create more things like Space Jam, which does not <laughs> have gradients? No, but I think uh, for me, uh, the, the proposed syntax in the end there is, is, is quite simple to understand. And we already apply that to an animation. Uh, so we have kind of an accepted that, no, we want animations to look natural. We want them to be uh, uh, yeah, nice looking and, and, and playful. And, and why should we not have that capabilities with color as well, uh, I would say. Uh. So uh, one thing I actually will take away from this talk as well, which is probably not the scope of that talk. Mm -hmm. I always use the browser tool, like URL bar, mm -hmm. to make notes and copy paste mm -hmm. it to Twitter. Yeah. I will use Alfred from now. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's a cool thing. Works well. um, so you also use Sketch, obviously. Can you recommend some particularly useful Sketch plugins that save you the headache and the trouble every single day? Oh, you mean besides the easing plugin, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sketch Runner uh, is my favorite plugin because it's uh, similar to the workflow I have in the editor and the browser, where uh, you know in the browser you command shift P when you are in the inspector mode, and you do the same in your code editor. In Sketch Runner, then you just 
command and then backtick or like a button over here, I can't remember. Um, and then you just type, so you don't have to learn the interface, you don't have to kind of waste energy doing these things, because you would just type what you want to do. I want to scale, so you just boom, and then SC, and then it pops up, and you press return, you don't have to go around with your mouse. Uh, that's so sketch runner. Sketch runner, and you could also use it, if you have sketch runner, you could go in and say install, Easing gradients, and then you could just install it immediately uh, without having to search for it. Uh, okay. so it's a Anything point. else that's worth keeping in mind? Something, something that maybe is you know, obs ob an obscure, or something that people don't use much. No, to be honest, I try to keep my setup uh, kind of vanilla most times because, uh, yeah, well you might get your laptop stolen and then it's nice to have a vanilla set setup, but also, uh, in, in general, I don't uh, try to keep my number of plugins both in VS Code and Sketch and other places uh, okay. Uh, limited. Um, okay, so maybe one of the f uh, last questions, um, because this is always something that's been I think that everybody is struggling with at this point. So there is always this phase where you have the mock-up and it's almost in a perfect shape. It has that perfect gradient, yeah. right? And maybe you have a prototype that has that perfect gradient. Yeah. But there is always this friction between tr when during the transition from the mock-up yeah. to an actual functional prototype or the final result in HTML, CSS. Yeah. And whenever you have to update something, let's say in HTML, CSS, yeah. you have to go back and you know, es essentially replicate what you've done. Yeah. Is that breach, what are we going to do about it? Do you mm -hmm. think there is anything that's going to happen in the workflow? Maybe there is something that works well for you? No, I think like what we've seen uh, also in the last couple of days with like the grid inspector and some of the other tools we start having in the browser is that uh, we will start treating the design um, uh, programs we have more and more as like a mock-up or a sketching uh, type thing where we kind of, oh, we have different ideas and we, we try things, but then uh, where we actually make things perfect and make things really nice, we actually do it in the browser because we are also at a point now where I believe that the browser is oftentimes more capable. So, so there's no reason to be limited but by what you're able to do in Sketch if you're actually able to do more amazing things in the browser. Uh, so I think that will be the workflow uh, going yeah, forward yeah, I think more I and more. I, uh, I agree. I think at this point, I, I see this really strange thing that um, when we have a project, projects in Germany or so, or even because we had also a project in, with cancer research yeah. in uh, Denmark, yeah. uh, it feels like in many ways um, when it comes to tooling, when it comes to processes, there is still this conversation happening every now and again mm -hmm. where the designers should code and mm -hmm. developers should design, things mm -hmm. like that. While I feel, maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, that in Eastern Europe and in Russia it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. There is no question of that kind. You just do stuff and then if you need to do a bit of CSS, so you do a bit of CSS. It's not <laughs> that uh, separated. So if you're a designer, you just learn a bit of stuff to adjust the margin, margins and paddings and colors yeah. and maybe grid layout. Yeah. It's not such a big deal. No, at Momondo, we had uh, my role there was a front-end designer. Uh, so, so I was very much the bridge in that kind of bigger setup that could kind of translate what the designers had of ideas and kind of feed them new ideas as well, but also feed it into a uh, like robust code, uh, code base and uh, a systematic approach that you would have as a programmer. Uh, then it got bought by some American people and they didn't really understand what the, that kind of title was about, so they kind of changed the procedure a bit. Uh, I th felt that was an, a bigger setup at least. Uh, you need those people who are able to to bridge the gap. You don't need to, all designers don't need to be able to code, all developers don't need to be able to design, but you need to have some people in your team who are yeah, bridging. You can always, I think you can always just benefit from knowing at least a little bit about the other side, the dark side, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you like. Yeah, yeah. Um, now the landscape is broad, that's probably the last question mm -hmm. here. Um, so in terms of tooling these days, yeah. you know, we have Adobe XD, we have Envision Studio show coming up, we have Sketch, obviously. What would you bet at this point? Do you, have you tried <laughs> Adobe XD, for example? No, I was uh, I was burned hard by Adobe, I think. So, I, yeah, I don't, never really. I use it when I have to, but then this I. This is I being recorded. Yeah, no. The <laughs> next sponsor <laughs> of this conference might be Adobe. Yeah, I'm just saying. You, you, have to, you have to be honest. Uh, but um, I think I really enjoy the how easy Sketch is to work with. Uh, I'm waiting for, an, uh, I got an invitation, but I didn't get the actual access to the like early access developer program for InMission. So, I'm. Um, don't really able to judge that yet without having seen their kind of plugin interface and API because uh, I think for regardless of what tooling you have the most critical part is to have a nice API for uh, for crazy people and, and amateurs to to come up with new ideas and to to play around with and extend the functionality uh, right. 
Um, yeah. yeah, I'm actually looking forward to Envision Studio because it shows a little bit of promise in terms of design systems. Obviously, you can do all the stuff in Sketch now too, but it feels like it could be one of those tools that connects the abilities of Framer, yeah. or Figma, and the other things kind of all meshed together. So I'm looking forward to see yeah, how it's going to evolve. Just need to iron out the bugs and make it really, yeah. Yes, in the meantime, we have <laughs> wonderful <laughs> gradients to look yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just in case you have any question, because I don't see many showing up here, yeah, uh, we always encourage speakers to go to the lounge where you can ask questions right there directly and they probably will be well you probably will be here as well for yeah. the rest of the day if you will want be. if you're interested about the t-shirt <laughs> then yeah. maybe you want to tell the story about the t-shirt uh, so I grew up in Ethiopia as I mentioned but Ethiopia is, is terrible at football so what you do as a kid you always pick like a team that is good so at the Africa Cup of Nations uh, Cameroon was a, a good team and uh, Cameroon is has always been a good yeah, team Yeah and, and amazing like uh, they're also the lions of Africa so so it's like a, there's like a, some romanticism there uh, and, and I just felt that this t-shirt has a nice line as well so I was a fan as a kid so uh, now that it's World Cup, I had to put on a football t-shirt as so well. So you're going to stay here for a couple of weeks? <sighs> Fortunately not, I have to go back and work. But uh, I'm looking forward to that as well. It's good work, so uh, yeah. All right. All okay, well. excellent. So thank you so much oh, for thank joining you. us. <laughs> well done.